Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Elhamdülillah ve salatu ve selamu ala Resulillah. Eşhedü en la ilahe illallah ve eşhedü enne Muhammeden abduhu ve rasuluhu sallallahu aleyhi ve ala alihi ve sahbihi ecmain. Dear brothers and sisters, assalamu alaikum ve rahmetullah. Uh, sorry for the technical issues that uh, delayed our start. Alhamdulillah, uh, we're continuing our uh, weekly Quran online study circles and tonight we're uh, going through verses 10 through 14 in Surah to Saf, Surah As Saf, Surah 61 in the order of Quran, uh, Surah 61 verses 10 through 14. These are very important verses of Quran that we all need to pay attention inshallah and benefit in the best ways. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us to uh, give our best attention and we can benefit in the best ways. Ameen Ya Rabbul Alameen. Uh, the verses are addressing believers. Uh, verse number 10 says, A'udhu Billahi Minash Shaitan Ar-Rajeem Bismillahir Rahman Ar-Rahim Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu hal adullukum ala tijaratin tunjikum min azabin alim. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is addressing the believers, the Muslims, and asking a very important question. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, O oh believers, shall I show you, shall I point out to you a tijara, a commerce deal, a commercial deal, basically a bargain, a kind of deal that will save you from a very painful suffering. The kind of deal that can save you from a painful suffering, punishment. It's very beautiful the way Allah first addresses the believers, O oh believers, Iman is the best favor of life, the best gift of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah addresses people with the best thing that they have and says that, shall I show you? Shall I point out to you? Shall I guide you towards a deal, towards a bargain, a tijara? You know, first of all, we should reflect on how Allah is asking a question, you know, when we ask questions, usually we don't know the answer and we want to know the answer when we ask questions. But when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asks questions from human beings, of course, he knows the answer. So he doesn't ask questions so that we can get the, uh, uh, so that he can get the answer. But that our efforts to try to answer the question, this process of trying to come up with a question is a process of guidance for us. So that's why most of the time Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asks us questions. And also to get our attention, Allah says, shall I point out to you a deal, a bargain, a tijara, that will save you from a very severe punishment, a very painful suffering. Now, of course, everyone would say, why not? Yes, uh, who wants to end up with uh, painful punishments and sufferings? No one. And everyone wants to say, yes, Ya Allah, show us. Especially believers who believe in Allah, who understand who Allah is, who trust Allah with the highest level of trust, definitely would say, yes, go ahead, Ya Allah, show us, tell us. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us, تُؤْمِنُونَ بِاللَّهِ وَرَسُولِهِ وَتُجَاهِدُونَ فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ بِأَمْوَالِكُمْ وَأَنفُسِكُمْ This deal is, Allah presents the deal or the bargain that you believe in Allah and His Messenger and strive hard in His path in the path of Allah with your wealth and with your lives. SubhanAllah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala explains the deal is to believe in Allah and his messenger. Now, Allah addressed, started the question with all believers. So Allah addressed us as believers, but then says, believe, meaning that you are 
called believers, and I'm calling you with that, but I want you to believe in a deeper way, in a, in a, in a more meaningful way. The kind of belief that leads you to actions, the kind of belief that changes your lifestyle, the kind of belief that helps you to succeed in the goals of life, the kind of belief that gives you energy and gives you drive and motivation to move forward in the path of Allah, that kind of belief in, in Allah and his messenger, that kind of trust in Allah and his messenger, that kind of conviction about Allah and messenger, that's what Allah is calling us to have. Belief in Allah and his messenger and strive hard in the path of Allah. Strive hard, jihad. Jihad is a very powerful word in the terminology of Quran, the word that has been misexplained or misquoted or misunderstood, unfortunately, these days a lot. Jihad means striving in the path of Allah, exerting your highest potential, exerting your highest efforts to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to protect yourself from the displeasure of Allah. That is jihad. Jihad is to basically use our highest amount of time, energy, wealth, and everything that we have in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is really jihad. And Allah says that have iman in Allah and his messenger and strive hard with your wealth, with your possessions, and with your life's possessions. Whatever we possess, our talents, our education, our knowledge, our energy, all other resources that Allah has given us in our hands and they are considered our possessions. And also with our lives, whatever it takes basically, strive in the path of Allah. Put your best efforts in the path of Allah to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the sake of Allah, in the path of Allah, in the cause of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is the deal that Allah is offering to us. Basically, to be a true Muslim, to be a sincere Muslim, and to be an active Muslim. Jihad is basically to be an active Muslim. That not only you're a Muslim for yourself, but you're a Muslim for in the society. You want to establish the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala around you. And you want to establish the deen of Allah in the society. And you want to really work for the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And you want to be active, active at different levels in the family level and the community level at the society at large for the sake of Allah, for the deen of Allah, for the cause of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is jihad. In the path of Allah, in the cause of Allah. And as we know, jihad has all kinds of forms. Jihad against our low desires when we say no to our low desires. Jihad against our bad habits. Jihad against, you know, uh, our wishes that we want to keep the money for ourselves. And we say, no, I'm giving it for, for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Financial jihad and social jihad and is standing for the truth, and is standing for justice, is standing for peace, is standing for the cause of Allah, is standing against oppressors, is standing against wrongdoers, and is standing any, uh, any wrong actions. That is jihad, fi sabilillah, with our best of potentials, including our lives. If someone, you know, uh, uh, threaten us even, that, hey, your life will be in danger if you do this, that's okay. Allah is the owner of my life and I am ready to give it if people want to take my life just because I'm standing for peace, I'm standing for justice, I'm standing for truth, then let it be. So Allah says, this is the offer to believe in Allah and his messenger and to do jihad in his path, in the path of Allah with your wealth and with your lives. And if you do so, Allah said, uh, first of all, before explaining all the benefits, This is better for you if you really understand. If you understand the wisdom behind this, 
deal, if you understand the reasons and the benefits of this deal, if you understand the consequences of this deal, then indeed you will be convinced that yes, this is the best deal that I can have. You know, all of us usually are looking for a deal and all of us go after deals. And a lot of people, day and night, they talk about the deals and the TV and the commercials and the postal mails that we receive all the time talks about the deal, right? We get all kinds of advertisement all the time and commercials about the deal. And everybody is just trying to, you know, make the deal and save. And they, they, they boast about it that I made so much, I saved so much money. I got such a good deal today in buying this or in selling this or in, you know, uh, acquiring this thing or that thing for myself or for my, house, for my house or for my family. We all talk about deals all the time and we all focus on making a deal, a deal that really is profitable. And Allah is offering here a deal for us which is the best deal that no one can, you know, compare it with. Yes, you know, when we make deal, when we make a tijara, we put our best talents, we, bust, we put our best wealth, our best capital in it. We put our best efforts to really make profits. So Allah is using the same concept of tijara, a bargain, a deal that, you know, this is the kind of deal that's worth of your attention that's worthy of your uh, focus and uh, energy and time and wealth and everything. To truly believe in Allah and his messenger, to truly act upon the path of Allah, to truly, you know, make efforts to strive. And if you do that, this is better for you than anything else, than any other deal that you can imagine. You know, a lot of people, if, if, if someone says this deal can bring two times or 100% profit, who will not jump on it? But the kind of deal that Allah gives is billion times more than the capital, right? We live a few decades in the, in the, on this earth and then we live eternally in the next life. So compare the benefits that we get and the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from this kind of deal this is billion times better than the capital that we are putting. And then Allah explains that what kind of benefits we'll get from this deal. First, يَغْفِرِ لَكُمْ ذُنُوبَكُمْ Allah forgives your sins. Allah forgives your sins for you. What else a believer wants from Allah? A true believer should be always concerned about his shortcomings, about her sins, about all of the mistakes that we have made. And we should be always worried about it, but what would happen? What if Allah does not forgive those sins? What if Allah takes me into account for all of those wrong things that have happened from me? We should be always concerned as a believer. And Allah gives the first promise that he will forgive your sins, all of those things that you're concerned about. Allah will wipe it out. SubhanAllah. Number one, this is not the only thing. Number two, Allah says, وَيُدْخِلْكُمْ جَنَّاتٍ تَجْرِي مِنْ تَحْتِيَ الْأَنْهَارِ And Allah admits you into the gardens under, we, under which rivers flow. The gardens basically with flowing waters. The gardens of all kinds of beautiful you know, trees and fruits and shadows and all kinds of things that we see in these limited gardens in this world now compared to the gardens of Jannah that Allah says that you will get over there. Allah will admit you beyond forgiving your sins. Allah will help you to enter that kind of place. And then beyond that, وَمَسَاكِنَ tayyibah And beautiful mansions, very pure places to live, the places that will bring tranquility. Askin, Maskan is a place that brings tranquility, peace, inner happiness, the place that you would be excited about when you hear about it. That kind of mansions, that kind of palaces, 
that you have never seen in this world, Allah will give that kind of mansions in that world after entering the garden with, full, uh, with flowing waters and with all kinds of other aspects of those gardens. In the everlasting bless, in the everlasting gardens that will ever last and will not stop. The continuous flow of mercy of Allah, the continuous flow of favors of Allah, the continuous enjoyment, the continuous excitement. Yes, some people think that, well, Jannah, if we get everything that we want, then after a while it will be, and it possibly could be boring. No, no, not even one second, it will not be boring. It will be exciting and entertaining all the time, every second, scenes can change, colors can change, you know, everything is changing and you will be continuously entertained with all kinds of entertainment and no sign of sadness, no sign of tiredness, no sign of, sign of dullness will reach the person who enters Jannah. And it will be forever, forever. No sickness, no aging, no tiredness. Subhanallah. Allah announces that this is a triumph success. This is a very powerful and very profound kind of success. It's a tremendous level of success. You know, we all talk about success and we all get excited about success. But Allah is promising the kind of success that he calls it Azim, the tremendous, the triumph, the great kind of success. SubhanAllah. That is really success when you are in those kind, that kind of place that you will have enjoyment forever, peace forever, happiness forever, and all kinds of blessings and whatever you want. Whatever you are you want, whatever you like, whatever you have appetite for, forever, continuously, subhanAllah. That is the kind of gifts that you will receive over there. And if you really compare it with some humble efforts in this world that if I do in the path of Allah, then that kind of reward, wow. What is the maximum amount of effort that we can do in this world, you know, if we really work day and night in the cause of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and if we are really giving 100% of your priority, attention, energy, time, everything to the cause of Allah, still it's nothing compared to that kind of reward. That's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala many places mentions uh, Jannah as an inheritance. You know, just like inheritance comes for free from the parents to the children, uh, when you when you see Jannah, you, you look at what you have done in this world and you will see that, wow, that's nothing compared to what I'm receiving here. It's like sometimes you go for a few hours work for somebody and they say, okay, you just come and work for me for a few hours, I'll give you $1 billion. $1 billion just for a few hours that I work for you? Yes, it's much more than that. $1 billion is nothing compared to the reward. And if anybody is a smart, understands this deal, then, it, then they would really take that deal and put every effort. We have an interesting story from the Prophet Sallallahu time. You know that when, uh, when the Prophet Sallallahu was going through a lot of persecution in Mecca and he was looking for a place to uh, migrate and uh, after coming back from Taif, he started thinking about Medina and there was because there were already some Muslims in Medina who there were some people who had accepted the message of uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when they were coming for uh, Umrah to Mecca, uh, you know, they had uh, accepted the message. So there were already some Muslims in Medina and some of them came to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and they made a kind of pledge. It's called Pledge of Aqaba, Laylatul Aqaba, a special night. They came and the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, you know, took a pledge from them and uh, asked him what to do. And one of the great uh, men here, Abdullah ibn Rawaha uh, from Ansar of Medina, that he 
came and he said to Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that, uh, okay, we're ready to do whatever you want, but tell us what can we do for Allah and what can we do for you? What can we do for your Rabb and what can we do for you? The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam responded that for Allah, what you should do is do not associate anybody with him. Do not do shirk to him. Do not uh, 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 sign any partners to him. And to me, protect me with your uh, uh, wealth and lives, just as you protect your families uh, and your possessions. And Abdullah ibn Rawah said, then what is the deal for us? What is in return for us? The Prophet Sallallahu said, Jannah, Jannah, the paradise is your reward, is your return. And Abdullah ibn Rawah said, what a beautiful deal. We will definitely follow up with what we have pledged to you and we will not break our promise and we will not allow others to make us break this promise. And they went to Medina and subhanAllah later Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam went uh, uh, to Medina also when Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala asked him. So uh, this was the kind of deal that was demonstrated in the life of the Sahaba and every companion of the Prophet when they were accepting Islam, that was the kind of deal they were taking. And then Allah says in the next verse, وَأُخْرَى تُحِبُّونَهَا And in addition to all the benefits that you are getting in Jannah and all that, something else that you like, that you love. What is it that you love? نَصْرٌ مِّنَ اللَّهِ وَفَتْحٌ قَرِيبٌ The help of Allah, the help from Allah, and a victory, a, victory, a close victory. Basically, a success that you want to see in this world, right? A lot of people may say, well, Jannah is far away. And in the next world, I want this to see some of it in this world. I want to see some of the, you know, uh, prophets in this world, some of the return. And Allah says, yes, I, I know. He knows. He's our creator. He knows that. And he says, something that you like to see and you want to see soon, you can't wait until then. Okay, I'm going to give you that also. And give the glad, glad tidings, the good news to believers. That they will have Fatul Qareeb, a very close victory that's coming soon. And for the Sahaba, uh, for the companions of the Prophet ﷺ in those days, that victory was basically the Fatha Makkah, the conquest of Makkah that happened uh, a few years later. Uh, and for all Muslims uh, to the time after Prophet Muhammad وسلم, it could be the victory of basically establishing the Islamic system in the society, establishing uh, and seeing the success of Islam, you know, in the in the community, in the society, and uh, establishing the rule of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala in our family lives and in around us, you know. So and in the countries, Muslim countries, Alhamdulillah. So uh, that is. The Fatih Qareeb that Allah promises that, that that's also possible. So basically, Allah is calling us to be a true Muslim, to be an active Muslim, and work for the deen of Islam, work for the system of Islam to be established, work for the deen of Allah to be established. It is not enough that I am just a good Muslim and that's it. No, I have to work to share this message of Islam with others. Because if, if, if it's good for me, why I don't want it for others? I should want it for others also. I should share it in the best ways. I should also make sure that I am putting my best efforts to establish the teachings of Allah, the, to implement the laws of Allah, the rulings of Allah, the guidance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in my own life, in my family, in my surroundings, to the extent that's within my control. And I should work to establish the deen of Allah in the society to the best of my abilities in the best ways within the limits that I have within the laws and, and rulings that we have in the land that we live wherever. So that is what Allah wants us to do. And that's what we should stand for. And that's the kind of deal that Allah is offering us. And then after these verses, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala calls us to get another at another level and that is to become helpers of Allah, helpers of Allah's cause. 
Let us look at this verse. Allah says, Ya ayyuhalladhina amanu kunu ansar Allahi kama qala Isa ibn Maryam lil hawariyina man ansari ila Allah. O oh, believers, be helpers of Allah. Be helpers of Allah. What kind of title Allah gives us? Be helpers of Allah. As we know that Allah is infinite and Allah is self-sufficient and Allah is free of any needs and Allah doesn't need anybody's help. He can do everything. He can establish Islam in the whole world in a second like this. He can make everybody Muslim like this. But he doesn't want to do it through miracles and through his own power. He wants to do it through prophets, through messengers, through books, and through these the guidance and teachings that we have received, that we stand up and we do it. And Allah will support the believers for that. So Allah says, be helpers of Allah. Helpers, that kind of honor that Allah gives us, that you are called helpers of Allah, Ansar Allah. That, that you are helping the cause of truth. You're helping the system of Allah to be established. Wow. What a, what a wonderful title that Allah gives. Be helpers of Allah. And then Allah takes us to a journey of history that it is not something that you guys are doing it for the first time, but people have done it in the past. And the closest example in terms of history for the Prophet وسلم, was the, the example of Isa وسلم, Jesus, peace be upon him, before Prophet Muhammad وسلم, that he also called on his disciples, as the Quran here says, that كما قال Isa ibn Maryam للحواريين من أنصاري إلى الله As Isa وسلم, said Isa, son of Mary, the son of Maryam to Lil Hawariyin, to his disciples. Hawariyin actually, how is means uh, who that comes from the word white clad, whitened, wear, or uh, someone who wears white cloth. And this was referring to actually a group of Jews uh, from Bani Israel uh, who were uh, with uh, Yahya salam, John the Baptist. John the Baptist, Yahya Islam, before Isa Islam established a movement and a movement to bring reform and to bring, uh, you know, established justice. And people stood by him. They were called Essenes in, in the history of Judaism. And these people were the one that actually supported Isa Islam. And Allah called upon them. And so the, when it says, well, Hawariyin, it doesn't mean just those 12 disciples that typically are mentioned in the uh, Christian scripture, but it is all those uh, people of that movement that uh, uh, Yahya salam had started. So Allah, uh, the, Isa alayhi salam has, has, has addressed those people and says, who can be the helpers of Allah? Man ansari ila Allah. Qala al-hawariyuna nahnu ansar Allah. The Hawariyun, they said, we are the helpers of Allah. They stood up and said, Ya Isa, we are with you and we are going forward to support you and to support the cause of Allah, the path of Allah. So Allah says, be like those helpers of Isa alayhi salam. Now I stand for your prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi the last prophet, and all of you after him stand in this path and be helpers of Allah being helpers of the cause of Allah to establish the deen of Allah, to establish the system of Allah, the teachings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. فَآمَنَ طَائِفَةٌ مِّن بَنِي إِسْرَائِيلٍ وَكَفَرَ الطَّائِفَةٌ And Allah explains that as a result of that call that Isa alayhi salam made on that movement on those people, a group of them, a set of them believed in Isa alayhi salam, and they went uh, and accepted the message and started sacrificing their lives, everything. And uh, the, another, another group disbelieved in him. The rest of Bani Israel, they 
did not accept Isa alayhi salam, in spite of all kinds of miracles that Isa alayhi salam showed to them, they did not accept the message, unfortunately. And Allah says that they disbelieved. And then what happened? فَأَيَّدْنَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا عَلَىٰ هَدُوِهِمْ عَلَىٰ عَدُوِهِمْ فَأَصْبَحُوا ظَاهِرِينَ that Allah says, then we supported, we gave the help and support to those who believed from amongst them and they became victorious and they prevailed over the disbelievers. And as we know in the history of, uh, you know, Isa alayhi salam, the history of Christianity, that those disciples of uh, Jesus Isa alayhi salam Peace be upon him, you know, uh, who truly believed in him. And then they went around and they passed the message of uh, the truth, the message of Isa alayhi salam. But, uh, uh, and, and they succeeded. And, you know, the history, unfortunately, does not, uh, has not captured much of that success that uh, the disciples had. Uh, but uh, uh, the history usually talks about later stages especially some other individuals like Paul who came and changed a lot of things after Isa alayhi salam and, and they, uh, the, the teachings of Paul became the teachings of Christianity later on, unfortunately, and the original teachings of Isa alayhi salam were distorted and lost. And uh, so uh, Allah is, is, is mentioning in that group of disciples. And it's interesting that people of Medina also were called Ansar. Ansar means helpers. And from that, uh, uh, you know, pledge that they made that they accepted to be Ansar of Allah. You know, so they were called Ansar and Muhajirin, the group that went from Mecca later. So the two groups of Muslims in Medina. And, you know, so these verses, as we can see, SubhanAllah, there is so much in it. There is such a beautiful and powerful message and powerful invitation towards the cause of uh, through tend to uh, establish the belief in the proper ways and to uh, be active in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and what kind of rewards Allah will give to those who stand in his path and what kind of, uh, you know, compensation even in this world people can receive such as peace and hope and, and a tremendous uh, courage and confidence and many other things. Uh, so, uh, yeah, alhamdulillah, these verses indeed gives us a lot of uh, such uh, thoughts and uh, motivation. And by the way, this is part of Surah Al-Saf. Surah Al-Saf, historically, uh, if we talk about its history a little bit, uh, this surah was revealed uh, after the Battle of Uhud, in the Battle of Uhud, where Muslims had some uh, afflictions and some uh, uh, Many Muslims were martyred. So uh, then uh, before the Ghazwatul Ahsab, which happened in the fifth year of Hijrah, so this surah was revealed somewhere around fourth year of Hijrah. Uh, and uh, it talked about many of those uh, things that Muslims had, uh, you know, in the beginning of this surah. The surah is called Saf, Saf, which means the rank. And then it's meant the rank of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And these verses came after explaining that uh, Allah said that, uh, you know, uh, people want to stop the light of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. يُرِيدُونَ لَيُثُوا نُورُ اللَّهِ بِأَفْوَاهِهِمْ وَاللَّهُ مُتِمُّ نُورِهِ وَلَوْ كَرِيَ الْكَافِرُونَ So Allah explained that there are people in the world who are trying to extinguish the light of Allah. They want to blow out the light of Allah. And Allah says that Allah will complete His light. No matter how much they dislike it, Allah will perfect His light. This light is the deen of Allah, the kitab of Allah, the teachings of the messenger, that they will go on in the world and continue to spread and spread. So, but this is spreading, Allah wants people to stand and make such a deal to spread the message of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is the way that Allah wants his messengers and his prophets and their followers to make that happen. And uh, especially the last verse that Allah said that he has sent this message to supersede all other messages, basically. And so now uh, uh, Allah is calling for such a bargain or deal with true believers so that they can succeed and establish. 
I will, inshallah, I stop here so we can answer some questions if I can uh, <clears throat> before we uh, end this program. Okay, one of the questions is coming. How do we become true supporters of Allah? Uh, it's a very good question. So how do we become true supporters of Allah? First of all, we need to understand the message of Allah, the teachings of Allah. We need to understand uh, what is the message and what are my responsibilities towards this message. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala calls human beings to worship him alone, to submit to him alone. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala calls us to obey him and to obey his messenger. Allah wants us to prepare ourselves for our next life. Allah wants us to succeed in the tests of this life. Allah wants us to be the Khalifa on this earth, the trustee of him on the earth. Allah wants us to be the best human being with the highest potential that we have. Allah wants us to really use our best you know, efforts and potentials that we have for our own good for the long term and for the good of the society. Allah wants us to establish justice Allah wants us to establish excellence in everything. Allah wants us to establish peace. So these are the kind of goals and objectives of life. And we need to understand that message. And then after understanding it, we need to really embody it and act upon it ourselves and share it with others and work hard for this. In the cause of sharing, we need to work very hard. We need to be ready to, for sacrifices. We need to be ready for uh, all kinds of, uh, you know, tribulations and trials that we will go through. We need to be ready for uh, all kinds of tests that we will be facing, all kinds of resistance that we will be facing. And people will be calling us names People will be trying, will try to blame us and will try to look for faults about us and to try to defame us. So we should be ready. We should be ready to persevere. We should be ready to continue the path without giving up. We should be ready to spend our best positions in the path of Allah. That is, these are some pointers to become the supporters of Allah's deen, the supporters of Allah. Uh, what are the best ways to strive with our lives? There are all kinds of things that we can do to strive with our lives. Our life is a favor of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Our life is full of all kinds of opportunities. Our life has all kinds of resources and to use all these resources in the path of Allah, to use all these opportunities in the right way, that is to really uh, uh, strive uh, with our lives. Uh, so Allah has given us this life as a temporary trust to us, and he's gonna take it back from us. Our life is a trust, our health is a trust, our talents, or, uh, is a trust, our uh, energy, our education, everything that Allah has given us is a trust and they will be all taken back. Now, before they are taken back, we need to really utilize it for the long-term goals. We need to really utilize it for the sake of pleasure of Allah, the one who gave it to us. It makes sense to use all these things for the pleasure of someone who has given us all of these resources. So that's the best way to strive in this cause, to put our time, to put our energy. Many of us, we say that I don't have time to work for uh, Allah's deen. I don't have time for to go to masjid. I don't have time to go to this meeting for uh, masjid or for this organized Islamic organization or Islamic movement. Many of us come up with all kinds of other things. We give our life and our attention and priorities to other things, but not in the path of Allah. You know, so that's the way to support the deen of Allah and the best way to strive to give the best things that we have in our lives in the cause of Allah and uh, really stand for it 
with uh, the best of our potentials. Another question that comes, you mentioned the concern we must have about our sins being forgiven, but why do we revert back to sins from time to time and get distracted? Yes, I mentioned that uh, a true believer should be always concerned about the sins that uh, they have done and the shortcomings and mistakes that we have. Uh, so we should be concerned about it. That what if Allah doesn't accept it? And when Allah tells us that he's going to forgive, that's uh, really a great news and a great uh, you know, promise uh, of success. And now uh, uh, the question is that, then why do we revert back to sins from time to time? Yes, we are all sinners. We all make mistakes. As the Prophet ﷺ said, all of the children of Adam are sinners and make, make mistakes, but the best of the sinners are those who repent to Allah. So we all make mistakes. We are prone to make mistakes. We are human beings. We are not perfect. But making sins once in a while or slipping here and there, sometimes randomly, is one thing. But doing sins and continuously doing sins and consistently insisting on sins, that's another thing. We want to con completely avoid that kind of habit to continue uh, the sins, to insist on the sins. That's not a habit of a true believer. A true believer is the one who strives their best to avoid sins. But if sins happen, then they feel the remorse, they feel the regret, and they ask Allah for forgiveness. They don't want to live with sins. And five daily prayers are the best opportunities that continuously washes our sins. As the Prophet ﷺ explained it, like five times taking a shower every day. You know, so uh, uh, we don't want to stay with sins. We don't want sins to accumulate in our lives. So uh, we, we want to get away from sins as often as possible, as frequently as possible. And if sins happen, we want to seek forgiveness quickly. And uh, so if sins happen like that, that once in a while we slip, it shouldn't disappoint us, it shouldn't despair us, it should not make us too worried. And sometimes, you know, the hypocrites or people who are looking for faults, they look at Muslims, if, they, if one Muslim leader or if one uh, Muslim activist made one a small mistake somewhere, then they will dramatize that and they will make movies out of that and they will say, look at this Islamic movement, look at this Islamic uh, group, you know, this organization, you know, their leader or this person has done this, you know. We're human beings. We, we may make mistakes, but the sins that are unacceptable in the eyes of Allah, when we do it repeatedly, that's a big problem and we should never do that and we should stay away. And if we have done it in the past, you don't want to repeat it. Okay. Another question that's coming is uh, after this question, please kindly close this. Okay. So, uh, Alhamdulillah, uh, we have been talking about a very important set of verses. And I suggest that each one of us go back and take these verses because unfortunately I did not have the verses on the screen uh, when I started explaining. Uh, I forgot to put it in the screen. Uh, and uh, you can, inshallah, go and sit with your families and go through these verses and take your time, and especially in these holidays, and reflect on these verses, how we can implement these verses in our lives, how we can really live with these verses, with these kind of things, how, what kind of deal we really want to make with Allah uh, in this especially holiday season uh, that people, a lot of times, they are reflecting. And as especially New Year starts, you know, what kind of, New Year resolutions, if you are making New Year resolutions, what kind of resolutions you are going to make, inshallah, uh, for, for New Year, uh, and how, what you are going to do to become a true believer, inshallah, to become a better believer than what we are right now, and to strive harder, no matter how much we have striven so far, how much harder we can strive from now on, and how much we can offer more and more sacrifices in the cause of Allah, to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to serve uh, the people and the society, to become the most beneficial human beings, to become the most beneficial citizens, to become the most beneficial neighbors, to become the most beneficial family members, and to become the best in our jobs and everything else. Yes, that's what Islam wants from us. And that's what we want to establish a system of excellence, ihsan, a system of justice, adil, a system of peace and 
uh, second and uh, you know uh, tranquility and Islam a system of submission to Allah that everything submits to Allah and we all should submit to Allah and submit our will and our desires to the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala yes this is the kind of deal that we want to think about and reflect on it and help others to understand this kind of deal so that we can strive harder inshallah in this path may Allah help all of us to succeed in these endeavors and in these uh, goals and objectives May Allah help each one of us to become a true believer in the sense of uh, living that belief in our, our actions and our lifestyles. May Allah help us ex make us exemplary Muslims. May Allah help us to become ambassadors of Islam, to share Islam with others around us and to live for his deen. And may Allah help all Muslims all over the world, especially those who are suffering, those who are active in the cause of Allah and they are facing all kinds of issues and problems. May Allah help them and guide them and protect them. Those who are active within the limits of Islam, within the limits of teachings that Allah has given us. May Allah accept our dua for all of us and for all Muslims all over the world. Ameen ya Rabbul Alameen. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakat. So inshallah, this is ending the session. Allahu Akbar.